It's really easy to write the Notes app on the Mac off for being too basic, but I reckon that for most people it's more than enough. Plus, I think that the majority of people have no idea what they can actually do in the Notes app. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to share tips and tricks for the Notes app on the Mac that I reckon most Mac owners have no idea about. Okay, let's get into it. There is a feature on your Mac where you can add quick notes to a hot corner. A hot corner is where you move your cursor into one of the four corners of your Mac screen. When you do this, an action happens. In this case, creating a quick note. Let me show you how to do it and also show you a little extra step that I would recommend adding to this tip to make it even better. So if you open system settings, then choose desktop and dock from the sidebar on the left, then scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see an option called hot corners. Click on this. You can then see that you have the four corners of your Mac screen represented. And if you click into any of them, you'll see there's an option in there called quick note. You would select that. And now the next time that you wanna create a quick note, you simply move your cursor down to the relevant corner. Now, I do find that this can be a little bit trigger happy. So what I would recommend is that you add what's known as a modifier key. A modifier key is a key like function, control, option, or command. And this allows you to set it so that the action only happens when you move your cursor to that corner while holding one or more of the modifier keys as you choose them. This means you're much less likely to do this by accident. So for example, if you wanted quick note to trigger when you move your cursor to the bottom right corner, but only when you're also holding the command key, you would simply hold the command key in this menu and then choose quick note, then press done. You'll notice now that when you move your cursor to the bottom right corner of your Mac screen, nothing happens. But if you press and hold the command key while doing it, a quick note is created. Oh, just quickly, if you also own an iPhone, you might be interested in the Daily Swipe. It's an email that I send out every single day containing a quick tip for the iPhone. It takes seconds to read and implement, and better yet, it's absolutely free. If you want to check it out, scan the QR code that you can see on screen or click the link in the description. Thanks to an update in macOS Tahoe, you can now add items to your control center just like you can on your iPhone, which means we can very quickly and very easily add a button to our control center to create a new note. To do this, simply click on the control center button up in the top right corner of the screen and then choose edit controls. In the window that appears, click on notes on the left hand side and then look for quick notes. Click on the green plus button to add quick notes to your control center. Now, the next time you wanna create a quick note, you can simply open control center, click on the quick note option and begin typing whatever you want to type. There is a really quick way to create a note directly from your doc, and it's probably been hidden under your nose for quite a while. All you would do is right click on the notes icon in the doc, and in here you'll see an option called new note. Click on this, and a new note will be immediately created, ready for you to edit. You can link to other notes in the notes app, and it's really easy to do, especially here on the Mac. All you would do is, anywhere in the body of the note that you're working on, press the greater than button twice. That's the one that you get by holding the shift key and pressing the period button. You do that twice to get those two little right pointing arrows. And as soon as you do that, you'll see a window appear with your most recent notes that you've edited. So long as your note that you want to link to is within those most recent notes, you can just select it from the list and a link will be created straight back to that note. If you're linking a page from Safari to the notes app, I'm sure you already know that you can copy the URL of the page in Safari and paste it into notes. Or you could copy the text that you want from the Safari article and paste that into notes. But there is actually a way that you can get the best of both worlds. If you select the passage of text that you're most interested in in the Safari article, then right click in Safari and choose add to quick note. This will then add the selected text to a quick note in a quote format. And that quote format is clickable, meaning that later on you can click on that link and it will take you through to the article, providing both the bookmark and the content of the text all in one note. When it comes to keeping your Mac running at its best, most people skip the security side of things. And I get it, it sounds complicated, but it really doesn't need to be. Moonlock, who are sponsoring today's video, is a new Mac first cyber protection app. It keeps things simple and looks after everything in the background so you can get on with your day. It's super clean, really easy to use, and just does what you need without getting in your way. It keeps an eye on every file that you open, and if anything looks a bit off, it flags it straight away. Maybe you accidentally open a file in an email that, in hindsight, you shouldn't have opened. And if you want to run a proper check, 
the malware scan is just one click. It shows you what it finds in plain language. You just press remove and that's it. The file is quarantined, problem solved. There's also a built-in VPN, which is a really nice bonus. One click and you're hidden from hackers, trackers, and even your internet provider. It also checks your browser for dodgy extensions and tracking scripts, which most people never think to look at. My favorite part though is the security advisor. It walks you through the macOS security settings that most of us ignore and helps you sort out anything that needs attention without you needing to understand any of the technical stuff. If you want to try Moonlock for yourself, click the link in the description to try Moonlock free for seven days and use my code to get 10% off. Following on from that last tip, instead of copying and pasting URLs from websites straight into notes, there is a much better way to do this that is not only quicker, but also more visually appealing. So let's say that you're browsing an article in Safari and you want to create a link to that article in notes. You'd simply click into the address bar up at the top of Safari, then drag the URL from Safari and drop it straight into the note that you're working on. This will create a link with a preview, which looks much better than a plain or boring link. Notes on the Mac has a really clever method of adding links to other apps. And you may not have realized it because in order to see it, you have to open a note fully in order for the relevant button to show. So here I've just created a note and I've double clicked on it to open it out into its own window. When I do that, you'll see that there's a little chain link icon with a plus on it. If I click on that, you can see that I can link from loads of different apps that I currently have open. So I might be working on something in the craft app and I can add a link to that particular document. Or I might have an email open and I can choose add link and create a link to that particular email, which I can then click on later and jump straight back into that email. Or I might be watching a video on YouTube in Safari or working on a chat in ChatGPT. There's loads of different things that you can pull through here and all you have to do is click add link next to whatever it is that you want. Although just to remind you, you do have to have that specific app open in order for this to work. Here's a drag and drop tip related to notes that I bet you didn't know. Let's say that you're working on a project on your Mac and you wanna create a note related to that particular project and you've got all your files stored in a folder in Finder. You can open up Finder and then simply drag the folder from Finder and drop it into the note that you're working on. This means that at any time while you're working on this note, if you wanna get back to the folder in question and work on some of the files that are in there, you just click on it in the note and Finder will open the exact folder location. You can drag and drop calendar entries from the calendar straight into a note. You might be wondering why you'd ever want to do this, but if you think about it, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. If you've got a meeting coming up, for example, and you wanna pull some notes together ahead of the meeting, this gives you the ability to quickly click into the meeting itself whenever you like, whether that's to check in on attendees, double check relevant information, or to take the notes that you're currently creating, copy them, and then paste them into the calendar entry so that you've got them available. You can record audio directly into a note in the Notes app. And by giving you this ability, I honestly feel like Apple has kind of destroyed their own voice memos app because there's not really any situation where I would recommend that you use voice memos over the audio recording in Notes because it's essentially the same, but more. The flexibility that you get in the Notes app is infinitely better than the flexibility that you get in the voice memos app. So let me show you how you do it. Start by creating a new note. Then in the note, you'll see a paperclip icon up at the top. Click into this and choose record audio. A recording window will appear and you can simply hit the red record button down at the bottom to begin recording. You can pause whenever you like and resume if you want to. Then when you're happy with what you've recorded, you would just press the tick button down in the bottom right hand corner and your voice memo is added. Your Mac will also have a go at transcribing the audio for you. And I'll be honest, this is a little bit hit and miss. Apple intelligence is still way behind the abilities of some of the other AI tools out there. But what is good is now that you've got this audio file here in your notes, you can very easily take that audio file, drag it from notes onto your desktop, for example, and then upload it into the AI tool of your choice to get a proper, much more accurate transcription. Here's a search tip that you probably didn't know within the notes app. If you click into the search box in the top right corner of the notes app, you can search for something, and by default, this is gonna search across all of the notes in your notes app. But if you've got a note with a lot of text and you know that what you're looking for is inside of the current note, don't use the search box up in the top right. 
Instead, tap the ellipsis button just next to the share button. And in here, you'll see an option called find in note. This then brings up a little find window. You can type whatever it is that you're looking for into this and use the left and right arrows to locate whatever it is that you're looking for. You can also use this as a traditional find and replace if you want by clicking the replace button and filling in the necessary information. Now this next tip is unique to people who also own an iPhone, but I'm gonna include it because I reckon that's an awful lot of Mac owners these days. The notes app on your Mac is where one of the most useful features related to your iPhone is kept, and that's your call recordings. So the next time that you're on a call on your iPhone, you might notice this icon up in the top left corner. That's the call recording button. And if you tap on that, a countdown will show on screen. And at the end of the three second countdown, everyone on the call will be informed that the call is being recorded. Your iPhone will then record your phone call, both the things that you're saying and the things that you're hearing on the call. You don't need to do anything in particular, just carry on with your call as normal. And when you hang up at the end, the call will automatically be saved into a dedicated note in the Notes app. And if this is the first time that you're doing this, it will not only create a dedicated note, it will also create a dedicated folder for those notes. That folder is called Call Recordings. You can then go back to that folder at any time to view the notes containing the call recording. You can press play to listen to the recording and you can click into the preview to see the transcription of the call. Now, as I already mentioned elsewhere in the video, the quality of these transcriptions and the quality of the Apple intelligence powered summaries that you're gonna get here do leave a little bit to be desired at the moment. However, what you do have here is a really valuable file because you've got an audio file that you can drag from Apple Notes and drop onto your desktop or your downloads folder and then upload into the AI tool of your choice, making it really easy to go from a phone call on your iPhone to a really useful transcription in a matter of seconds. Did you know you can work with code in the Notes app? Now, I'm not about to suggest that you use the Notes app as a serious coding tool because that's definitely not what this is about. But there is a way that you can import code into the Notes app should you ever need to. So an example of how I use this is I use it as a way of editing the video descriptions to copy and paste into YouTube because if you copy and paste those descriptions straight into a note, the formatting gets all screwed up. But if you copy and paste them into a code block, the format is retained, meaning I can make changes here in the Notes app and then copy that same text back from Notes and paste it back into YouTube. It's really easy to do this. All you would do is in the notes in question, right click anywhere in the notes and go to paragraph styles and in here choose mono styled you can also use the keyboard shortcut shift command m if you prefer this will add a mono styled box to your current note and you can then either type directly into that box or you can copy and paste from anywhere else into this box let's talk settings for a moment because there are a number of useful settings within the notes app that i find most people don't know about the quickest and easiest way to get to settings by the way when the notes app is open is to just use the shortcut command and the comma key and that will open your notes settings. At the top, you have sort notes by, which by default is gonna be date edited. And I think most people are gonna to want to keep it this way, but if you ever want to change this so that dates are sorted by the date they were created, regardless of when you last edited them or the title of the note, you can change that here. There's also a tick box called always resume to last quick notes. And if you're someone who uses quick notes quite often, I would definitely recommend that you make a decision here about how you want to use this. If you have this enabled, it means that every time that you start a new quick note, the most recent quick note that you've been working on will become editable again, rather than creating a new quick note every time, which is what will happen if you uncheck this box. Choose whichever you think you're most likely to get value from. If you use checkboxes in your notes to create a task list, there is an automatically sort ticked items checkbox that you may want to enable. If you enable this, it basically means that regardless of the order of your list of checkboxes, as you tick them to complete them, they'll move to the bottom of the list. This won't happen if you leave this unchecked. You can also change the default text size of notes using the slider. That's a really common complaint that I've heard from people is that they find the text in the notes app just too small. This would be a way for you to easily resolve that because you're only changing the size of the text here within the notes app. And then finally, down at the bottom, if you use the locked notes feature, you can choose to assign a password other than your login password. This is of course really useful if other people in your household know the password to your computer and you wanna be able to keep notes extra secure. 
you can assign a completely different password to your lock notes from your login password. Just keep in mind, you're going to have to remember it. You can also enable Touch ID if your Mac supports it down at the bottom, meaning that your fingerprint can be the thing used to lock and unlock notes. If you want some additional security when you're creating notes, you can lock them. The way that you would do this is really simple. You can either do it from within the notes itself, or you can do it from the list view of your notes within a folder. We'll use that method for this example. So all you would do is right click on the notes in question and then choose lock note. You'll be prompted to input a password. This can be your password for your computer in general, or it can be a unique password for lock notes within the notes app, which you would change in settings. I'll show you that in a separate tip. Insert your password, click OK, and if your Mac supports Touch ID, you'll also be prompted to enable Touch ID if you'd like. When you do this, the note will not When you do this, the note will not lock immediately. It will instead show an open padlock icon on the note. That's letting you know that a lock has been applied to this particular note. You just haven't actually locked it yet. The way that you would do that is you would look to the menu bar at the top of the Notes app and look for the little open padlock button. Tap on this and the note will now be locked. Locked notes don't show previews anymore. They instead show a padlock icon with the fingerprint icon if your Mac supports Touch ID. In order to unlock the notes and view the content, you'd either use Touch ID on your Mac or input the password. If you want to remove the lock later on, just right click again on the notes and choose Remove Lock. So there you go, they were tips and tricks for the Notes app on your Mac to take your notes usage to the next level. What about you? Did you learn anything new? Or are there some tips that you think I should have included but didn't? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.